Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on forces in two dimensions. The topic of this video is adding and resolving force vectors. We have three questions to answer. How do you add force vectors to determine a resultant? How do you take a vector and resolve it into its force components? And what role does vector addition and vector resolution of forces have in the solving of F net equal MA problems? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous unit, we saw force diagrams that look like this, with the forces going up, down, and right and left. And we saw force problems that look like this. Again, all the forces are up and down and left and right, and we have to determine the acceleration, which means we have to find the vector sum of all the force vectors, the net force. And when it looks like this, it's quite easy. The answer to what's the net force is 50 newtons. It's easy because the forces go in the opposite directions. So we simply call one negative and add it to the positive. And that's how I got 50 newtons for the net force. And that gives an acceleration of 20 meters per second squared. So we can check this off our list as being an easy problem. But the question arises, what do you do if the forces don't go in do opposite directions like this? What if that once horizontal force gets tilted upwards and now is at an angle to the traditional xy axis? How do you solve a problem like that? You can't simply add an upward and rightward force to a leftward force. What you have to do at this point before you can do your vector addition is you have to resolve that angled force into what we call force components. And that's the topic of this video tutorial series on forces in two dimensions. Learning how to take these angled forces that are found in problems and making the problem simple using vector resolution. This video tutorial series will be very mathematical in nature and will analyze a variety of situations that involve forces that are at angles to the traditional xy axis, like this problem here that we've already talked about. We'll also see problems that look like this, in which you have an object hanging by two cables and you have to determine how much force is in those cables that would look like this. We'll even see problems in which there are three forces in a horizontal plane and you have to determine what would the third force be in order to balance the other two forces. And we'll see inclined plane problems like this in which you have to determine the acceleration of an object along a inclined surface. All of these situations are similar in that solving them require the resolving of angled forces and the adding together of the resulting components in order to determine a net force. This video tutorial series is based upon some other videos from our vectors and projectiles series that are shown here. And I've left links to each of these in the description section of this video if you need to freshen up on some of these topics. Let's begin discussing the graphical method of adding force vectors together. The goal of adding force vectors is to determine the resultant force, that is this vector sum of all the individual forces. We sometimes refer to this vector sum by a symbol called sigma f, shown here in red. And this vector sum of all the forces is often called the net force and is used to calculate the acceleration in F net equal MA problems. Here's an example in which we have three forces acting on an object and we want to know what is the resultant force. We'll discuss the head to tail method for graphically adding these vectors together. In the head to tail method I begin by drawing the first vector, maybe vector A. And where its arrowhead ends I begin the second vector from that point. So I start start the second vector at the head of the first vector. And where the second vector ends, I begin the third vector at the arrowhead of the second vector. When I'm done drawing all the vectors in the head to tail fashion, I can determine the net force or resultant force by drawing it from the tail of the first vector to the arrowhead of the th last vector. Here's that example using the three vectors that we see right here. First I draw A, and where the arrowhead of A ends, I begin vector B. And I draw vector B out to the same exact direction and magnitude as shown in the first diagram. And where that vector B ends, I start my vector C. When I've done, I've drawn all three vectors and I have to determine the resultant. It's drawn from the tail of the first vector to the arrowhead of the last vector. And you see it drawn there in black. Now, this resultant force could be measured if I began the whole problem with what we would call a scale, like one centimeter on the page of paper is equal to 10 newtons. And at this point, I would measure the length of that 
little resultant vector, and I would convert it to real world Newton units. Like if it was 1.2 centimeters long, I would call it 12 Newtons. And then I would measure the direction with a protractor. This is the graphical method of adding vectors, and it will become very important to know how to employ this head to tail strategy. When you're adding two vectors that are perpendicular to one another, you can do so using the Pythagorean theorem. Their direction can be determined using trigonometric functions such as sine, cosine, and tangent. Here's an example. I have to add vectors a and b. a is 12 newtons to the right, and b is 5 newtons upwards. So I begin by drawing out the vector a, and then I add vector b to it, employing the head-to-tail method. Now you'll notice that the resultant is drawn from the tail of vector a to the arrowhead of vector b, and it becomes the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So to determine its magnitude, I use Pythagorean theorem, claiming that the length of that hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the square of the length of the two sides. So r squared is equal to 12 squared plus 5 squared. And using my calculator, that comes out to be 169. Take the square root of 169, and that gives me r, and r comes out to be 13 newtons. That was easy. Now to determine the direction of this vector, this hypotenuse, I have to use a trig function. There's three of them, sine, cosine, and tangent, and their meaning is shown in the diagram above me. I'm going to pick the tangent function, which says that the tangent of this angle theta on the diagram is the ratio of the length of the side opposite theta, which is the vertical side of 5 newtons, divided by the length of the side adjacent to theta, which is the red vector, 12 newtons to the right. So I'm going to begin by saying theta is equal to the inverse tangent of the side opposite opposite to the side adjacent. And then I'm going to plug in my numbers, 5 for the side opposite and 12 for the side adjacent. I'm going to pull out my calculator and find out what 5 divided by 12 is. And then I'm going to find the inverse tangent of the result. And my calculator tells me it's 25 degrees. Get used to using your calculator in this unit because you'll have to do an operation like that quite regularly. Now I'll discuss the process of resolving an angled force vector into components. Forces that are at angles to the traditional x and y axes can be thought of as having two parts, an x or horizontal part and a y or a vertical part. We call these parts components of the vectors. Here's vector a. It's directed at an angle to the, tra to the traditional x, y axes. And if I want to find the components of vector a, I have to project this vector onto those axes. I'll begin with the horizontal axis. So I draw a vertical line from the tip of vector A to that axis, and the horizontal vector goes from the origin out to where the intersection of that vertical line is with the horizontal axis. I can do the same projection onto the vertical axis, and that helps me to determine the other components. These two components, AX and AY, are the components of vector A. This becomes important if you have an angled force being applied to an object, say, to accelerate it across a horizontal surface. That angled force has an X component and a Y component, and it's these two components that have to be determined in order to determine the acceleration of this crate. We can think of components as describing the effect of the vector in a given direction. For instance, in this case, fx describes the effect of the force vector f in the horizontal direction. And if I want to determine the horizontal acceleration, I need to know this fx component. Vector resolution is the process of determining the components of a vector, and it relies on the use of the trig functions sine, cosine, and tangent. Let me show you how. Here's the diagram we just saw of vector A and its two components, AX and AY. Now, it's often useful to take that vector AY and to slide it across to the right so that it becomes the side of a right triangle. There you see it. Now, what I can do is I can employ the sine, cosine, and tangent functions in order to find the value of AX and AY based on knowledge of the angle theta and the magnitude of A. It's important to recognize that A is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, that AX is the side that is adjacent to the angle theta, and that AY is the side that is opposite the angle theta. Once you know that, you can develop some equations for calculating AX and AY. AX, the side adjacent theta, is related to the A vector, the hypotenuse, by the cosine function, as shown above. In fact, we can say the cosine of this angle theta is equal to FX, or AX, divided by A. And then doing some algebra, we can come up with AX is equal to A times the cosine of theta. 
we can do the same thing for the side opposite theta. A y is related to the hypotenuse A by the sine function. Check it out. So we can say the sine of the angle theta is the ratio of A y divided by A. And using algebra, I end up with A y is equal to A times the sine of theta. This type of mathematical reasoning that results in these equations that you see here will be important for you to employ in order to solve problems that involve vector resolution. It's a fair question to ask, why do we need components? And the answer is because this problem is simple. It's simple to take the 25 and the 25 and the 65 and the 15 and add them up to get the net force since they all go in opposite directions or at right angles to one another. Because this problem is simple, it would be useful to make every problem look like it. This problem here is not simple because the 65 newtons at an angle of 25 degrees cannot easily be added to the other force vectors. But if it can be resolved into an fx and fy component, then it would be much more easier to find the vector sum of all the forces, and that's why we need components. Thank you for joining me on this video. Now, as I always do, I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing the, to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here's a few resources from our website, and links to each one of these resources can be found in the description section of this video. We have two simulations on adding and resolving vectors, and we have a couple of tutorial pages on the same topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.